first came the 4 Series, then there was the 5 Series, and in 2011, Peugeot launched the 508. Today, we're in beautiful Mallorca in Spain for the launch of the facelifted 508, and we've had a beautiful day driving through the spectacular countryside. This is the new 508. I'm going to show you what's changed. When you take a look at it from the front, there are some obvious differences. The first one, the headlights are now all LED. The two lights on the side are your low beams and then the center one comes on for your high beams. Something I really like is Peugeot's continuing its move to shift the badge from the bonnet down into the grille. If you take a look at the overall shape of it, it's a lot more masculine and a bit more angular thanks to those all new designed headlights. The daytime running lights have been shifted down the bottom and they've been designed to represent the shape of the claw of the lion. No changes to the side profile, but as we get further towards the back, you'll notice another shape change and the LED tail lights, which are pretty nice, I think. A bit more masculine again in the back, but the other major changes are inside. Okay, this is where it gets really exciting. I think there are some big changes in here, most notably, this is now a touch screen, which has reduced the need for a whole lot of buttons and that little dial down here. This is so much more simple. And Peugeot has also been listening to customers' desire to have somewhere to sit their phone. So there's a little slide compartment now here that fits your phone perfectly. Or in other cars, you might get cup holders. Because of the slide compartment, there's just no room for it. So they're still up here and they just don't seem to gel with the premium feel of the cabin. You do get a few extra touches though, like this chrome strip has a bit of an angle grinder effect. More importantly, there's been some extra safety features added, blind spot monitoring and a reversing camera. Now on our test drive today, there was quite a lot of hairpin turns and very steep hills, which only served to highlight the large turning circle of this car and the down low turbo lag. But through the mid range, it's very punchy and there's been no changes to the suspension, so it still rides beautifully. Now we don't have any confirmation yet on Australian engine specs or pricing, but it will be released in the first quarter of 2015, so we'll let you know as more information comes to hand.